Hello, world. Uh, I'm David. I'm a seminarian for the Diocese of Fort Wayne, South Bend. Soccer was a, uh, a big deal in my house growing up. My older sister played soccer. My younger brother played soccer. I played soccer. My dad coached soccer. My mom was forced to watch soccer, and she enjoyed it as much as she could. But yeah, soccer was a big deal. We'd uh, always watch the World Cup. I remember in 2002, uh, the United States made it to the quarterfinals, and they lost to Germany. I thought, wow, this is really cool. Like, America's on the map soccer-wise. But soccer sometimes made it difficult. I mean, we don't, to, for us to pray as a family. But I, you know, I loved soccer, and there's nothing wrong with loving soccer. But for me, it just kept me away from God. So as my sophomore of high school, I was playing at a soccer game uh, about an hour and a half north of where my parents live, and I ended up dislocating my knee. Uh, you know, it took me to the, the hospital, popped my knee back in, told me you can't play for like six months. And I was, you know, I've been playing soccer since I was six. And uh, the youth group at my church, Life Teen Group, uh, they would meet on Wednesdays and Sundays. So I had something to kind of fill that void. So I said, okay, I'll go. And the Life Teen Retreat, it was just great to see so many people my age who like actually believed this. Like they weren't faking it, they were really joyful. And around that same time, a, uh, a recently ordained priest was sent to St. Vincent's, uh, Father Jason. And he was so joyful, and he still is joyful. Uh, he liked the same sports I did. He was very approachable, and it was obvious that he really cared about the teenagers in the Life Team program. And I, you know, just meeting him kind of planted the seed like, man, maybe, maybe I could be happy doing that. Maybe quite possibly. And then the next thought in my head was like, no, no, that's not David. David does whatever David wants. Uh, but the thought just never left my head. Like, it was just always there. They call God the hound of heaven for a reason, because he'll just keep knocking at your heart. And I didn't really tell anyone. Uh, you know, I graduated from high school, and I, you know, normal people go to college. So I decided, hey, I'm going to go to college. And even my freshman year, I'd be walking to class, and a thought would pop into my head. I could be walking to class at seminary right now. Or I'd be in the dining hall eating with my friends. And I'd, the thought would pop into my head, I could be eating lunch with other seminarians right now. And I remember one night I just I could not sleep. And it was the day before Father Jason was moving away from the parish. He was receiving a different assignment. So I you know, woke up, went to 8 a.m. Mass, and caught him right after Mass. It was the day before he was going to leave. I said, Father Jason, can I talk to you? He's like, oh yeah, come back into my office. And his office was bare, you know, he's getting ready to leave. And I sit down, I start talking to him. I was like, Father, I, I think I might be called to go to seminary. And he's like, oh, I always thought so. And I was like, you could have told me that a long time ago. I had some, uh, some health problems over Christmas break and I talked to the bishop and talked to the vocations director and they determined, you know, hey David, would you be open to going to a parish? And at first I was like, no, you know, spend a whole year in a parish. Sounds dreadful, but it's been excellent. Uh, so this year I'm assigned at a parish uh, in Fort Wayne, St. John the Baptist, and it's, it's been a good experience. It's given me an opportunity to continue to grow. We're always called to constant conversion, uh, and this has been a great time just to renew my love for Christ, to kind of remember why I went to seminary. Because sometimes it's easy to forget why you went to seminary, what you're what your purpose is, why God called you. And I feel like I'm just, you know, finding that out all over again, having it re-spoken to my heart why I want to be a priest. So I've never been to Europe, never been to Poland, and I'm excited to see the, the world church. Uh, you know, the World Cup brings all the countries together for a common goal of soccer. But soccer's good, but there's something greater in this gathering of people. People don't get on a plane and travel to another country and sleep on the ground for a vacation package. You know, you do that for a pilgrimage. We're going to encounter something real, something truly present. We're going to encounter Christ. We're going to encounter Christ's church that he, that he has given us. I mean, going to Poland, I, you know, I have in my head, you know, how I think it's going to go. Uh, but I want to be surprised by God's love and mercy there. 
Uh, you know, he surprised me my whole life when I dislocated my knee and I was so sad. Uh, but he opened up another door that, you know, I could get more involved in my faith or having to be in a year at a parish, pastoral year. Uh, you know, that was certainly a surprise, but God in his love and mercy, you know, brought me to this amazing parish. And I, you know, I don't know what I'm going to find there in Poland. You know, I'm going to encounter God's love and mercy, and I, I'm ready for him to surprise me. Hello, world. You haven't met me yet, and I haven't met you yet. But I will see you at World Youth Day. And if you're not going, I will see you in the Eucharist at World Youth Day.